Hello and welcome to the Knit Sip Happy Podcast. I have a glass of rosé today. <laughs> My name is Nancy. I'm coming to you from the east coast of Canada, just outside of Moncton, New Brunswick, and it is Friday, March 29th. It is, hang on, rosé today. It's a rosé day because it's a day off work. Um, our small business is closed today because of the long Easter weekend, but I'm back to work tomorrow, Saturday. So it's a bit of a confusing week. I don't know what day of the week it is. Babbling already. Welcome. Welcome if you're new. Welcome if you've been here before. I hope you find something that you enjoy watching and spending a little bit of time with me today as I chat about knitting and I think it's all knitting today. Um, and things I've been up to and just a little life here um, uh, in my part of Canada. So if that's of interest, I hope you will find something uh, that you enjoy drinking while you're knitting and hanging out and uh, let's get going. So um, all of my links where you can find me, I'll put a screen up here. Um, I am knit, sip, happy everywhere. Instagram, Ravelry, Facebook, and my email address is also linked there. Um, all of the show notes will be listed below. There's a more button below the screen, and if you click on that, it will put a big drop down menu, and all of the links to my Ravelry pages and people that I talk about will be there. The other thing that I do is I put in chapters. So if there's a section that you're not interested in, feel free to fast forward through to a section that you are interested in. And um, yeah, so. So it is the end of March, uh, weather report, it is off, it's rainy and miserable and muddy and uh, it's a gloomy old day out there. So I have the overhead lights on and my ring lights and um, colors looking okay, but there's some weird shadows. So bear with me on that. Um, it's noon, it, it's middle of the day, but it's, uh, it's just the We've already been out for a walk in the woods. I'll have put a little bit of footage at the beginning of some snowy walks that we've had and um, this morning's wet, muddy walk. We currently are taking care of Archie, our grand dog. He is a three-year-old Springer Spaniel. My daughter and her fiance are in Greece enjoying um, a little bit of leave because he is currently deployed in Latvia. So they are enjoying two and a half weeks and we are counting down the days till young Archibald heads home because the house is a mess. It, it, it's dirty, it's sandy, there's toys all over the floor. It's like living with a very dirty toddler. <laughs> I'm too old for that. <laughs> so, um, uh, we'll do some chit chat later on for the rest of it. So if you're not interested, you can just say goodbye to me there, but um, let's get going. So as I said, I'm drinking rosé today because it's a day off and I feel like it's a rosé all day kind of day. Um, I'll be drinking this while I'm editing and hopefully doing some knitting as well later on. And yummy. Um, I am wearing no knitwear. Well, I'm wearing socks, but I'm not going to get my feet up because that would just be all kinds of awkward. I am wearing a new acquisition, but I thought I'll mention it here. It's uh, a knitter sweatshirt from Ginger Snap. I believe this is Colin's project. Kim and Colin run Ginger Snap Yarns here in Canada. So if you're looking for knitting apparel, um, I got this in the mail about a week, week and a half ago, and it's squishy and soft and in my color. There's a choice of colors um, that they do the foil on. And uh, yeah, so I'm wearing that today because I'm having, a, and, and spoiler alert, I'm not going to stand up because I'm wearing track pants because it's a cozy, comfy day. And um, I was about to say, I will. <laughs> I'm wearing a bra. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> well, that'll be getting whipped off as soon as this camera turns off. <laughs> TMI. Okay, um, let's talk about the cowl first. We've got a knit along going along, knit along going on until the end of day, Sunday, March 31st. Um, so knit any pair of socks, enter it on Instagram, Facebook um, with the hashtag that's here, or you can send it um, via email, the email that is here and all the details will be linked below. We're just wrapping this up. This started back in February and Sunday, March 31st is the last day. So I've got so many beautiful prizes. I'm going to do a little section later on. We'll talk more about the cow, but just 
that's there's more coming up about the knit along um, as we get towards the end of the podcast and we're going to go through we've got fo's whips i've got some design chat coming we'll talk about more details about the cow i've got some acquisitions and then some plans going forward over the next little bit until i see you again so let's get into it shall we fo's editing self is going to like that. I'm going to try and do a little pause and a stop so I can put my chapters in a little more, <laughs> a little more easily. I have two FOs for you today. I finished off uh, the Neward socks that I was working on last time. So I have two. I'll just show you. So this is a DK sock pattern that I released in uh, February. This is my second entry into my own knit along, which I get no prizes, but I wanted to knit along with you guys. I showed the blooming lovely last time. I'll put a picture in here. It looks like this side I've got more room. I might have to <laughs> shovel over. And then this is the New York pair. So I held a fingering weight yarn double. And I'll show you that in just a second. So the New York socks have this great slip stitch cable te um, te texture. Goodness gracious, I haven't spoken much today. Here's hoping the rest of the podcast goes better than this. So this is running down the leg and the foot and then on the back of the leg we've got a nice little slip stitch detail. It is cuffed down with a slip stitch heel flap because I love that squishiness and then the gusset decreases and down the foot. So that is done. And I had the yarn I used was Ducky Darlings that I picked up in Scotland when I was there last September. This is Perth's Darling that I got from, are you going to focus? I'm on these same settings as I had last time. It's me. It's my face. <laughs> See, I'm still practicing. Perth's Darling. And this is, had good yardage, it was 425 meters. And um, if you're going to hold fingering weight double to do a DK sock, you're not looking for a 400 yard sock skein. You're looking for a 460 yard or a 425 meter um, skein of fingering to give you enough yardage to get a full, nice long leg DK sock. Um, because you're holding it double, you have to think your DK socks gain is usually in the 230 to 250 yard range, yard meter. Um, so if you take your 460 meter, divide that by two, because you're holding it double, that gives you the 230 um, for the D, for in a DK base. So doing a 400 yard um, sock is only going to give you 200 yards. So you're definitely going to need a contrast heel toe or contrast cuff heel toe to get you a full length sock. You can certainly do shorties, but that's just my little tip. But this is the little ball <laughs> that was left. So this is all I had left after casting off sock number two. And that's gonna go into the little basket I have over here for Brad to put into Magic Knot Ball. I am getting filling up another basket full of uh, scraps for him to uh, make me another Magic Knot Ball. Hang on. Score, two points. Okay, so that's that project bag. Can now get emptied out and put away. The other finished object that I have, if you've been on Instagram, you will have seen, I finished my gither cowl. <clears throat> so the gither cowl is a new pattern from Amy Palco of The Meaningful Stitch. And I test knit this pattern for her and it was just a delight. So it released last week, March 23rd. So I will have my Ravelry project page linked below and you'll be able to click through to purchase this pattern from Amy if you would like to. She has Ravelry and I believe she also has a pay hip store. But this is a, an infinity cowl with a single twist in it. And it is started with a provisional cast on, which was right here. And I started with this section with the um, pink, as the main color, the light blue as the contrast color, and the dark teal as the is the uh, accent color. And then you do so many repeats and then you switch the positioning of your yarns. So we went to the dark teal for the main color, 
the hot pink as the contrast color and the light blue as the accent color. And then the last one is switching to the light blue as the main color, the dark teal as the contrast and the pink as the accent. And then at the very end of it, you graft your stitches together and mine is a little shocking. Um, I have no problem Kitchenering socks, but Kitchenering two ends of these cowls, I do find a little bit challenging. Um, there are bits of it that are better than others, and there are bits of it that are not great. But fundamentally, it's going to be behind my neck, at the back of my neck anyway, and nobody's going to notice. So this is great. I'm looking at myself, not you guys, just so I can get this into position. But you can see that you can get all three colors, color combinations. And I really like to be able to see all three like that. Um, it's super squishy and warm. It's, it's too warm for me to be wearing this now. We're heading into the uh, double digits and low teens. There is threat of more snow the first week of April. I'm hoping that's wrong, but um, we're not into these deep, dark colds. But this winter, um, I'm next winter, I'll be wearing this tons because it's just so squishy and warm. Um, and I'm thrilled with it. So that is finished object number two, my The Gither Cowl. Take this off because I'm in the room, I'm in my craft room with the door completely latched and closed because Archie is on the prowl wondering what the heck I am doing. So, so far so good. Brad seems to be keeping him occupied. So before we, I finish off The Gither Cowl, I'm just going to show you um, what I had left. Um, my yarns were, the pink was Legacy Lane, the teal was the Creative Knitter, and the light blue ooh, color, hello, is Hedro Yarns. And you can see my color's gone wackadoodle because it got really dark. Hello, are you going to come back? Hmm. I'm going to pause you and see if I can't get the color to come back. There, that looks a bit better. So I had um, about 49 to 51 grams of each of these skeins left from 100 grams. So these can definitely go into another project together or into other things separately, or I'm, maybe I will knit another one. Um, it would be a great gift knit. Um, and I thought the colors went really well together. Uh, I think I mentioned before, I do struggle trying to find three color combinations, but um, these worked out beautifully. So I will probably, sometimes I'll re, how do you handle these part skeins like this? Um, I'm tempted, I've been starting to um, rewind them into better looking cakes. I pull from the inside of my cakes. I prefer that for the knitting experience, but it does leave these kind of floppy, messy um, cakes when you finish a project. So I think before I put these back in my stash, I'm going to rewind them all into respectable looking cakes, put the tags in the center for them all, and then tuck them back into my stash for the next time. Are you an inside puller or an outside puller? It's quite a controversial subject in the Knitiverse, isn't it? I am an inside puller. Okay, so that's it for finished objects. I've got um, a few whips to show you. I'm going to save the design socks until we get into design chat later on. So I'm just going to move those out of my basket. You can see behind me, I put one of the uh, ginger snap socks that I showed you last time as well as Parade of Cones and uh, Crooked Cube. Whew. That was harder than it should have been. Okay, so something that I showed you last time. Let's do that first. I really only have three active whips in my regular section and then a couple of things in design chat um, for various reasons. And we'll talk about that a little later. So this is being housed in my beautiful Eldenwood Crafts sheet bag. This is Ginger Snap by Libby Johnson of Truly Myrtle, 
I showed you this last time. I have zero recollection of where we were last time. I think I was on the second sleeve, wasn't I? So I have finished the second sleeve. Both sleeves are finished and I'm back on the body working my way down. So what I have decided to do with this is do some A-line shaping. So before we go into that, I probably, I'll put a picture up here of um, Libby from Truly Myrtle wearing her beautiful plum. I believe she has a plum for the sample, really pretty. Um, this sweater is all about the great fit over the shoulders and these beautiful bands, twisted stitch bands at the cuffs and the ribbing. So, uh, there's no other shaping in the pattern. So I'm putting in some A-line shaping to accommodate my pear shape. Uh, it looks like about every inch and a half is what I'm doing. I think I went 10 rounds, depending on what my gauge was. The only thing I have to consider here when I'm doing these is the, the stitch pattern at the bottom obviously has a certain stitch count. There are numerous options for stitch count, so I just need to make sure whatever my increases are, I managed to hit a stitch count that works with the pattern for the ribbing cuff. So I'm not there yet. And to be honest, this has kind of taken a back burner for the last uh, two weeks. Um, there's some deadline knitting and some deadline work that I've got coming up. So um, coming up quite rapidly. So I'm. Um, this has kind of gotten tucked away and I will finish it before spring summer season, but I won't be wearing it until the fall. So this is backwards, there we go. So we've just got a nice um, twisted rib neckline, not too open. The original ginger bread has a more open boat neck, which is less my jam. This ginger snap has a more closed in neckline, which is my preference. And I'm love working with, loving working with this yarn. This is, I showed you last time, it is a Knit Picks yarn. The color is olive and it is, I'm knitting it at a DK gauge, but this is the Upcycle Alpaca Blend. I don't know if they still have their sale going on for it, but this was $5 US in their web shop. It's 33% alpaca, 30%, 34% wool, 33% acrylic. It's listed as hand wash, so there's no super wash components is my, understa is my understanding of this, which is fine because I hand wash it anyway. And yeah, it's beautiful and squishy. I had five skeins of this. I am not gonna need five skeins, but that's okay. Um, I will definitely be getting into the fourth skein, I would wager, so I'm gonna have a full skein and a bit left when this gets finished. Shove it back in my bag. And I'm using my little needle stitch stoppers from um, Kim from Ginger Snap that I got at, I think I actually ordered these. I was about to say I got them at Knit City, Toronto, uh, Knit City Montreal last year, but I didn't. I uh, ordered these because, you know, wine. Speaking of which, Okay, my other whip, another whip, you've kind of seen, um, but you kind of haven't. I was knitting for my son's girlfriend, it's her birthday, I'm looking over here because I'm wondering where the original yarn is. Um, I showed you a picture of a part shorty sock. I'll put a picture in here for you. I frogged it because I didn't have enough yarn and I had nothing else in my stash that um, I could make work with it. So I think I had showed you this. I, I wanted to do her two pairs of shorties. Her birthday is April 8th, which is the eclipse day. Um, there's a full solar eclipse happening um, on Monday, April 8th, and we are it pretty much in the path for totality. So we're gonna be having Zach and Cass, his girlfriend, over for dinner to celebrate her birthday and watch the uh, solar eclipse because we're outside of the city as well. So it, uh, anyway, rambling off on that. 
I wanted to have two pairs of little shorties. So I've been using leftovers. So I talked about this last time. I can't remember if I had the sock on the needles, but this is a uh, Felici from Knit Picks. Uh, it's the Doctor. Ta no, it's called Time Travel, but it's a Doctor Who color. So I cast on top down, did the ribbing, just did a pearl bump when the color changed, did a heel flapping. No, I didn't. I did a shadow wrap heel and then worked down and did the toe. So I've got this pair is complete. And did I keep bringing any of the yarns? Yeah. So this is the Knit Picks Felici Time Traveler. And I can't remember. I've already put this Agate Heather in the Stroll colorway that I used for the contrast. So this, yeah, I, the design line, the Regia design line, I'm looking, I wonder, I can't remember where I've shoved the, the ball. I had 30, 33 grams, 36 grams, and it, it wasn't enough. The gauge I was knitting it at and the size foot, it just wasn't working. I need, I, I, there is enough to do a sock for somebody, but not a, as wide a foot. So I scrapped that and um, finished the Time Traveler pair and then cast on another, I had some opal scraps. I divided it into two balls because I needed a little bit of a travel project. I headed to Halifax on this past Monday. I had to pick up some uh, things for my shop from a, from a supplier. And while I was there, I went to visit a girlfriend and spent the night with her. So I needed just some simple, plain knitting um, to hang out with her. And while our electric car was charging, I do have to charge while I'm away from home. Um, so I have, you know, 20, 20 to 30 minutes sitting waiting while the car charges, which is fine because it's just more knitting time. What I have done, ah, just lost one, I have a hoe. So I'm working this from the toe up. This is a Knit Picks Stroll Tweed in the colorway Firecracker Heather. So I'm using that for the heel, for the, excuse me, the toe and the cuff. I'm not sure if I'm going to have enough left to do the heel. No, I'm not going to. So I will be pulling something else out of stash, a blue or a green or a yellow to do the heel. I decided to do these as afterthought socks just so that I could um, work up, use the half the amount, the half ball that I had. And when I was done, I just did 10 rounds of ribbing and cast off. So what I've done on the front of this is just a little, these little panels down the side. So this will just be a fun little pair of shorties. So one done minus the heel. And then I have doo -doo -doo, the second sock on the needles. I met up with um, a lovely knitting friend in Dartmouth on Tuesday before I headed to Ikea because every trip to the Halifax Dartmouth area has to end with a trip to Ikea. It's close to the supplier, A, so you know if I needed an excuse, which I didn't. Um, but I'd messaged Jillian because she said if you're ever in the if, if whenever you come to Halifax or Dartmouth you message me and we'll meet up and have a coffee. So I did and we did. I met up with Jillian at um, Starbucks close to Ikea and I was knitting away on this and realized you can see the yarn barf. <laughs> I had about three inches knit about here. I forgot to do the texture panel on the front. I had just been knitting in plain vanilla while we were talking, which was lovely. Fluff, fluff on my lip, there it is. So I had to rip it back and start that little texture panel. And the stitch marker tells the tale. Suck it up, buttercup. And that's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> I ripped it out and started the texture panel and um, yeah, 
I worked on this a little bit while I was charging the car. I didn't, I didn't restart it while I was sitting talking with Jillian because it would have taken too much concentration for me to get it set up. Once it's set up, it's fine. I can read it, but anyway, so that's being housed in my pretty sheepy bag from Chest Christine at Chestnut Fibers. So these have a deadline. Um, April 8th is Cass's birthday. So that's a week and a half from now. So not a problem. Um, I just have to be organizing my time at this point because I have to finish the sock, then I have to cut in the heels on both and give them a little wash. Um, none of my blockers fit Cass's feet. She's, I usually do a 68 or a 72 stitch sock for her, but she only has size five and a half feet, five and a half, six feet, no, five and a half. So they're quite wide and quite short and none of my blockers work for that. So I kind of have to just lay them out. And if I need to give it a quick pin, I will. Um, but I don't have blockers that actually fit. So blocking has been difficult with Archie here. There's a lot of stuff crammed in my craft room to keep him away from it. And the place where I normally block my knits is the Ottoman out in our living room. Well, he has chosen that as his sentry point to watch all the comings and goings as people come in and out of our driveway or down our road with barking to follow. So blocking has kind of not really happened. Um, I had to block my the gither cowl in here as well as having all the crap. It was, but I made it work and we've only got five, four more days with Archie before Sam comes home and we can return him and clean our house from top to bottom from the fur and the sand and the dirt of having a dog in and out of the house in this messy weather. And um, I'll be looking forward to a little less toddler time, having to play with him and keep him occupied and the walks. And it's fine, but it's got me off kilter and off my regular ske regularly scheduled programming has been a little off for the last two weeks. But yeah, I, this was a long haul. I don't know if we'd have him again for this long. Yeah. And I've told Sam that. But two and a half weeks is a is a bit much. It's a bit much. It's a bit much. Okay, my last whip that isn't a design sock is a new cast on. I talked about this last time. It is using the scrumptious silk and linen blend from Deborah at Yarn Indulgences. So this is the coral colorway. I don't think I have the ball band in here. No, I don't. That's okay. If you're coming to the Fiddlehead Fiber Festival, Deborah's going to have a huge amount there. And also there'll be a lots at Knit City Toronto as well. Um, I have got new little stitch stoppers. This was a gift from Kim at Ginger Snap. It's one o'clock somewhere. Sure is. I am knitting this on my Knit Pro Knitter's Pride Zings. I have an interchangeable set. Love the colors in this one. And this is my Salty Air Tea. I had mentioned that this was going on the needles. And after I finished talking to you last time, I looked at a calendar and realized, yikes, this needs to be finished either on my body or hanging in the booth um, on April 12th for the Fiddlehead Fiber Festival, which means it needs to be finished a couple of days before that so I can get it washed and blocked out and ready to go. So I cast this on and I've been giving this um, a good bit of attention. I have just, just split for the sleeves, just split for the sleeves. So the Salty Air Tea by Samantha Guerin. I have knit this before. I did a super cropped version in the Sadness Garn Tin Lena last summer to wear with a dress. This I want as a longer um, to wear with jeans. So I have put my sleeve stitches on the stitch savers. And I have marked, uh, so I've just, this is the first row of the sleeve separation. I have put a stitch marker in at the center point of the sleeve stitches, the sleeve pickup, because I will be doing some A-line increases shaping. So every time I split for the sleeves for a sweater, whether I think I'm gonna do A-line shaping or not, I always put in a stitch marker at that center 
point for the underarm for the sleeve. That way, if I decide to do the A-line shaping, I'm already set up and ready to go. So I have two skeins of this yarn. Um, the yardage is, oh, I do have ball band. <laughs> The yardage is very generous in this. It is 490 yards, 448 meters, and 115 grams. So that gives me uh, just under 900 meters or almost 1,000 yards, which gives me a t-shirt, like a sleeve length that I like just past my bicep, and a long enough length that I can do my A-line shaping and it's long enough to wear with jeans. So I'm gonna put this in the bag as where it should be. So I went, got through, where am I? Is that the front or the back? That's the back. Okay. So it is a top down construction. I did the alternating cable cast on that was called for in the pattern, which I didn't do my last time because I didn't understand the joys of the alternating cable cast on. Even after listening to Kelly and Noel on the Knit Chat Cafe, now I understand the allure of the alternating cable cast on and how pretty it is. So it gives you a really nice finished edge, very similar to the Italian sewn bind off, which is what I will use on all of my edges going down. So cast on at the back, do the ribbing. There are short rows to make the back higher than the front. I did an extra set or two. I can't remember. The modifications will be listed in my Ravelry page. Excuse me, I'm just getting a little warm all of a sudden. Um, yeah, so I did an extra set or two of short rows to bring that neck up a little higher. Um, my first salty air tee, I ended up having to pick up the stitches, cut off the neckline and knit it smaller. So I'm hoping that this doesn't, I'm, yeah, I'm hoping that this is a better fit around the neckline. We shall see if I have to do surgery, that will happen after Fiddlehead but I'm, I'm thinking positively and hoping that I will be able to just um, block it, weave in the ends and go. So, this is a beautiful lace panel. The increases are built into the lace running down. So your lace motifs get bigger as you go. So from here on out, it is just vanilla knitting. I'm gonna do a couple of inches, have a try on and make sure everything's okay. Then, actually, let me rephrase, let me jump back a second. I'm going, I'm going to start helical knitting with the second skein. I will do two inches. I will cut both, both skeins of yarn, go back and do the sleeves so I can alternate skeins for the sleeves where it joins up here. And then I'll go back and finish the body when this first skein is finished, I will be alternating from the inside and the outside of the ball from the second skein. I'll use my button trick. If you've never seen this before, um, I've, I learned of it from Chili Knits and Legacy Fiber Chelsea. I put a link, I'll put a link here for the, oh no, it's up here. I'll put a link for uh, a little show and tell on how to use a button to stop your yarns if you're working from two skeins or from the inside or the outside of the ball to stop them from getting tangled. So that's what I'll be doing for the second skein as I run down the body. And I can't, A, I can't wait till it's warm enough to wear this and B, I can't wait to see this finished. I just, I love this color. Love this color. So that is what I'm working on. And again, this, as I said, this has a deadline of, uh, for the Fiddlehead Fiber Festival. That's it for whips that are not design orientated. The kind of, let me, let me step back a little bit. So I don't remember last time I showed you this basket from Doris Ann at Savoy Baskets. I'm using this to hold um, my sock heels and my sample yarn that I'm using. So I have just finished knitting the last sock heel. This is a Flegel heel that's knit from toe up. So I have to block a few heels and I mentioned my blocking issues that I'm having with our little friend visiting, but I am gonna have to block these this afternoon after I podcast and finish tidying up from the podcasting mess. I'll be setting up that I can block these in here. 
because Sunday I need to start um, working on my class content and uh, get that sorted out and I have squeaking outside of my door. Somebody has come upstairs and is hearing me talking. I'm going to ignore him for now and see if he goes away, but we may have to open the door so he can say hello. So I've been working on these heels as well. Um, some people had asked last time if I would put this content on my channel. I don't know yet. I'm going to have to see how this all goes. Um, and so stay tuned. I will let you know. Um, if you weren't here last time, I was talking about I'm doing a class at Fiddlehead Fibre Festival, a sock heel clinic, how to um, pros and cons of different heel styles, toe up, cuff down, and how you can modify those to fit your requirements for foot or to fit into the style of yarn that you're using. So I have a synopsis and I have notes, but I need to take pictures of all of these and start putting arrows in and um, getting the print material ready to go. So that's my Sunday job. And um, yes, so let's, I'm going to, we're going to do design chat. So if you're not interested in my sock designs that are upcoming, you can skip on. The next section will be about the sock knit along and uh, showing off the prizes. So first thing I'm going to show you, well, we, whoa, oh, wrong way. I showed you this last time and thank you so much for all of your feedback. You guys loved it and I love the way it looked. I am working, it is in testing. This pattern is in testing. I, I still think I know what the name is, but I'm still not, we're, I'm holding on to that for a little bit yet. This will release, this pattern will release in Toronto um, as a collaboration with Ginger Snap, Kim and Colin at Knit City Toronto. So they are going to have samples at their booth and I'm working on the second sock. So I've just finished doing the color work and I'm just starting the pearl bump stripes. And then I'll be down into the heel flap, gusset, wider stripes, toe, bing, bang, boom. This doesn't have to be done until May. So um, this is probably gonna get put away for now because again, I've got more time sensitive things that are on the way. This is in my fringe field supply bag. I put it in this one because of these this cute stitch marker set with the rainbows. It just it just made me think of this pattern with all the fun colors and the bright the brightness. So the other design that is at the forefront right now is the Titi Gaga socks. I uh, showed you tester pictures last time because I didn't have my sample yarn. I have my sample yarn. This is being housed in a Twisted Daisy fiber project bag that I got for my birthday, I think three or four years ago. Um, she no longer makes bags, but I am so happy to have this in my collection because it, it's just perfect. Perfect for me. And we could even say that that glass right there is a rosé. It's not a red. I love my rosés. So I got, I got my yarn. I got my yarn. So this yarn is also called Titi Gaga. That's the color right there. We've got these beautiful hot pinks and more kind of purpley pinks to a light, pretty pink. It's just perfect. This is a fun, this is going to be a fundraiser for breast cancer research here in Canada. Um, which runs through the uh, Canadian Cancer Society. I donated my tits up pattern um, proceeds for the first week to them last year. This year, the drive is going to run for eight days where the pattern is going to release on April 5th and will be ending on Saturday, April 13th at the Fiddlehead Fiber Festival. Deborah is going to be selling this yarn online and at her booth at Fiddlehead and I can't remember how much she said, but she's also going to be donating proceeds from this yarn to the same breast cancer research fund, which is so generous of her. And I'm so thankful that she was, you know, did this custom dye job for me. And we're going to be collaborating and sharing all of the Titty Gaga goodness um, over the next week or so. Today's 29th. So yeah, a week today, this pattern is going to launch. 
Um, I'm not sure when Deborah's going to have the yarn in her shop, if she's going to wait till the 5th or go early. Uh, keep an eye on my Instagram or her Instagram, and I will actually probably post here on YouTube as well. I'll do a little uh, short or a community post or maybe even a little video. We'll, we'll see how next week goes. But this is a new base for Deborah. It's called Bamboo Sock, and it is squishy. It is 70% bamboo, sorry, back up. It is 70% merino, 20% bamboo, 10% nylon. So do you want to see the sock? I didn't put a, bring a blocker, hang on. Hold please. There are days I wonder if I come and do this, it's like, have I ever done this before? I do love to come and have a chat with you though. Um, I appreciate all of your comments and your patience with my uh, shenanigans. And um, I, I really, I just love coming and having a chat about my knitting. So I have cast on and I am working on the sample version, you will have seen a version of this when I showed my pictures last week. I'll take it off the blocker in just a second. Or I'll just turn it around so you can see. So this is the front of the sock and we've got a little bit of ribbing there to make this stand out. So we've got two panels like this. The, the nipple panel is running down the sides and then we've got the boobs running up the center. And there we go. Color's not quite showing true there, but you'll get the idea. And then on the back of the sock, we also have another panel of nipples running up the back of the leg. Uh, <clears throat> I have written this, it is cuffed down. Let me get this oh, centered back again to show you properly. <clears throat> Garter stitch heel flap, slip stitch heel flap. So we are working cuff down obviously, and I don't have too much more to go before I'm hitting the toe for this. So this is, this and um, salty air are pretty high up on the priority, li priority list. I would like to have this finished and so I can get it blocking early next week and start taking um, pictures and doing um, videos and things like that to support for Instagram, um, social media <coughs> for the pattern release. And yeah, it's still not, it's still wonky on the blocker. That's all right. Um, yeah. I'm really pleased. Um, the testers are, are done theirs, I think. Yeah, the testers are all done theirs. I've got notes from them. Um, they'll be sharing their pictures soon. Um, Sophie on Cozy Meadow Knits showed off hers on her podcast. Jen showed hers um, on their podcast. It's Jen and Karina. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry, I'm forgetting. Northern Knits Up North? <coughs> I'll have it on the screen and I'm going to link them below. They're two friends. Jen has, Jen has tested it for me numerous times and she's just a hoot in every single group that we've been in. We've never met in person, but I feel like I know her and now getting to see her um, and her knits on YouTube. I'm going to link their podcast below. You should definitely go check them out. Of course, there's two of them. So great content, knit and crochet. Um, good fibery content. So Jen and Karina, I've been really enjoying their podcast. They'll be linked below. Jen is a test knitter. She showed her socks. Um, Sophie Cozy Meadow Knits showed her Titty Gaga socks in her last episode. And yes. Whew. So design chat. Is that it? Um, I'm going to have one more design coming for Knit City Toronto. Um, that just got confirmed last week. I wasn't sure if that was happening or not. It is happening. Um, so I'm just waiting for that yarn to come. I already have a swatch um, that wasn't accepted. Um, by I, I submitted some designs publications and they weren't accepted. So I've been using those uh, 
some of those for design. So I have one I've been holding back that I'm really excited about that I'm going to use for the next collaboration. I'm not going to say with who, I'm not sure if I can. So there'll be another design coming. I've already worn my testers. My goodness, they're I said I still have one tester who's done every single test knit, and that's Heather from the Wheelhouse Knits, also has a podcast. I'll have her linked below. Leanne, uh, my friend, doesn't have a podcast, but she should. Um, Leanne Duguay on Instagram, she has knit all but one of my patterns. Um, so they are knitting socks like things possessed for me right now, and I'm so grateful. <laughs> um, okay. I'm calling it on design chat. So if you left me here, if you left before design chat and now you've come back, we're going to talk about the knit along a bit more in detail. So hopefully you're seeing this before Sunday, March 31st. I wanna try and get this out. I said it's early in the day on Friday, March 29th. My plan is to edit and get this sucker uploaded and out to you later today. So hopefully over the long weekend, you'll be able to catch up. And if you have not submitted your posts yet for the sock cow, you will have time to do so. Um, I wanted to show you the prizes and talk about how I'm going to be doing this. So today is the 29th, it ends the 31st. I don't wanna wait another three weeks to do this announcement. So I'm gonna do a separate video next week beginning of April. I don't know when. It'll depend how my work week, my, the day job goes. I'm not sure what my work week is going to be next week. Um, so I will be hopping on here for a shorter mini-sode to announce the winners. I might even wait and do it to show off the, the Titty Gaga socks and announce that release. I might do a combo mini-sode of prize winners and the new sock release as I'm thinking out loud talking to you guys. What do you think? Does that sound like a plan? I think that sounds like a plan. So, um, yeah, like I said, we won't have to wait until the next episode. So I'm going to be grabbing entries from Facebook, from Instagram, and from my email. Um, I'm going to be creating a, an online document of some sort that I can put all the double entries in and combine all of the information from three different spots. And then I will ask our AI friend to pick some numbers for me. And um, I will announce then. So I have been so graciously gifted um, prizes as well. So I wanted to show all those off and give these makers um, a big thank you from me. So new since the last time you saw me, um, I um, Monique from Blueberry Fields reached out to me and asked if she could donate a bag uh, a project bag to the knit along for the prize giveaway. And I was so thankful. Monique is a bag maker in Canada. She's a Canadian, another Canadian, loving to support our Canadian makers. And I received my package and she sent two beautiful drawstring project bags and said that I could keep one. I momentarily thought about, thought about not and gifting them both but I changed my mind. <laughs> I am keeping one of them and I'm pretty sure it's this one. Beautiful with the linen canvas. It's a box bottom with that gingham back. Um, pockets is inside and this gorgeous neutral canvas inside. Um, yes. So this one is mine. This is the first time I'm pulling the drawstring because I wasn't sure. I still was double thinking. So Monique sent me a note and said, please feel free to keep one unless you don't like them. Oh my God, I love them. They're amazing, this patchwork. So this is gonna be the prize for one of you guys. It's the same style with that box bottom with the blue gingham on the back, drawstring with that neutral canvas on the inside. And Monique sent me a lovely, sent me a lovely little note. <laughs> so, Yes, this one is going to you guys. So I will have Monique linked below Blueberry Fields. So, um, yeah. How lucky, how lucky am I to be meeting such lovely people in person and online. And maybe one day we'll get to meet in person, Monique. So this is prize number one. And then Kim and Colin from Ginger Snap, I 
have an order. I have acquisitions to show you. <laughs> so in my package with my sweatshirt and the acquisitions I'll show you a little later, Kim said she was going to send a prize. Well, I was blown away when I got this bag. So let me let me get these goodies out of this bag to show you. So this is from Kim and Colin at Ginger Snap. They are huge supporters of, of my designs and lots of Canadian makers. And uh, I can't wait to see them again at Knit City Toronto. They will, be, they will be traveling all the way from Calgary, Alberta to Toronto to vend at Knit City and I will get to see them there. So we have two skeins of Tweedy DK. It is 8515. Superwash Merino, Donegal Neps. This is the colorway Moments. And this is Timber Wolf. So they would be beautiful together in something or hats separately or so this. And then this amazing, look at the sun. I couldn't believe it. So this is a beautiful one of um, Kim's bags. They're used, make, made recycled tartan from Scotland. So this bag is huge. It's definitely a sweater quantity. It could hold a couple of smaller projects inside. So we've got recycled tartan. And then Kim also let me know that the webbing was a French webbing. And how pretty is that with the fun motif running across? So it has a big pocket on the inside and a nice light neutral blue so you can see all your bits and bobs inside. And a fun little zipper pull. Handcrafted, sure is. Large tote bag, Dress Royal Cunningham. This is, and um, what a generous gift. Thank you so much. Um, as I said, this is gonna be going, that set, the yarns and the bag will be going out as a prize as well. So that's number two that you haven't seen. Hang on one second. I just need to grab my little tote that I've got here. The other thing that you haven't seen, my friend Deborah at Yarn Indulgences very kindly gifted us a skein of her sock marl. So it's 400 yards, 386 meters for 100 grams. This is, let me let the color come back. There we go. I love this sock marl base. Um, I've knit with it numerous times. This parade of cones back here was our design for Knit City Montreal last year in um, cone colors <laughs> with the orange, the bright orange. But this has got, oh, come on, come back to me. Come back to me. There we go. Blues and greens and purples. And she calls this her inner artist. Deborah doesn't do a lot of repeatable colorways. She likes to be mad scientist with the colors and completely be inspired by her colors. And she can't necessarily replicate it. Now, that being said, Titty Gaga, she wrote the formula down and it will be replicated as much as we need. So don't worry, you're, it's not gonna run out. She's got lots and we're going to have lots at Fiddlehead. It'll be at the online shop. And um, we'll see if the demand it warrants it. It may be at Knit City Toronto as well. So let me know if you're coming to Toronto and would like to see the Titty Gaga yarn, let me know and we'll make sure we've got some there for you. Okay, so this beautiful skein from Deborah Yarn Indulgences, you can use this in um, where you would use hand spun. So in cowls, pressed flower or the Andrea Maori where she uses spin cycle, you can easily use something like this in place of the more expensive options. Or you can make a beautiful pair of socks. So that's one. I think 
that's all that's new. The rest of them are prizes I've showed you before, but I'm just going to do a big wrap round up right here. So I've got these gorgeous little pouches from Sophie at Cozy Meadow Knits, and they both have um, her beautiful stitch marker progress keeper sets inside. I'm going to pair this with one of these skeins with, with a skein of yarn. So you'll get a Sophie pouch and a skein of yarn. So that's two, three, four prizes. I've got a skein from the Creative Knitter, a sock set. It's called Succulents. She sent me a package in Christmas 2022, December 2022. She had a collection out and this was one of the yarns and I designed my Let's Stay Home socks in her colorway, Let's Stay Home, but I ordered this one, um, but she had gifted me a, quite a few skeins as well, so I wanted to share the love. So this is one that has been waiting to go to one of you guys, so this is gonna be part of the draw. Then I've got some, again, Ginger Snap from my stash. I had um, done an order from Kim and Colin last year when they were doing a mystery bag and this is one of the colors that came in my mystery bag. It is their dust fingering which is a 7525. Great yardage if you wanted to hold this double to do DK socks that's the kind of yardage you're looking for or single. So these two will be going with the Sophie pouches. Okay. I should just put those with those so I actually remember that's what I said. And then I've got some turtle pearl. Emily very kindly donated City Girl to the podcast for the giveaway. So it knits up like this. If you remember, I knit my socks for my sister-in-law's mother, Roxy, in this last December and they turned out beautifully. So... This will be going to somebody. And then I grabbed some extras from Emily to share with you guys. I think I showed you this one last time. I can't keep the ball band. Ah, I can't keep the ball band stuck together. This is Ohm. Beautiful. Gradient kind of rainbow colors with the green mini. And then I have an extra of the, oh, sorry, I forgot this was in plastic. In the Lady Amalthea, kind of unicorn self-striping with the hot pink mini. So, and with any of these prizes, if you would like one of my sock patterns, excuse me, if you would like one of my sock patterns, I am happy to gift you a sock pattern through Ravelry or email if you aren't, if Ravelry isn't accessible for you. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. By my count, we've got eight prizes for the knit along. Wow. <laughs> So um, that will be, as I said, March 31st, that ends. I'll be doing a separate video to announce the winners once I've done all of the admin work that will get me to double entries and single entries. Um, if you knit one of my patterns, you get a double entry. Um, if you're knitting a pa any other pattern, which is more than welcome, it's a single entry. So that's the knit along. And the prizes that are will be winging their way to you. I don't know if you watch Ruth Loves to Knit. I sent her a, um, a sock set, the Licorice All Sorts, the All Sorts of Fun sock set from Turtle Pearl Yarns. It went from my part of Canada to her part of England in four days. Four days! Couldn't believe it. So I ha that's on my list this afternoon. I haven't had a chance to catch up with Ruth yet, but um, it's been a busy, been a busy old week. It's busy old time again. The uh, Day, day job is busy still, which is fantastic. I am grateful to have this extra day where the business is closed today so that I can do this and catch up with you guys. And then Sunday, Monday will be complete knit work. Oh, I'm lying. I got to go into work on Monday. Our modem, 
our high speed modem is giving us a hard time at the store. It keeps dropping its connections. And anyway, so I have to go in and meet a technician who's going to install the new modem while we're closed because I don't want that happening while we're open. Anyway, I'm digressing. So where am I on my notes? The acquisitions. Okay. So we are going to do an acquisition section. What's coming up next is um, upcoming. What I'm, what's, you can expect from me in the next month or so. So if you're leaving me here, we're practically, we really are done the knitting content. There's a little more knit chat coming, but if you're leaving me here, I will say goodbye. If you're sticking around till the end, do you want to see what I got? Do you want to see what I got? Do you want to see what I got? So, um, Kim and Colin from Ginger Snap, as I mentioned, I did an order. Um, some of my test knitters are working on sets. Kim and Colin, I showed you, they have three different sets for this sock pattern that they will bring to Knit City Toronto. So some of my testers wanted to order sets to be able to knit in the Ginger Snap yarn, which was amazing. So uh, one of my local knitting friends wanted to do an order, so we decided to split the shipping. It would be rude not to. So I got my sweatshirt. Kim sent me those cute little stitch stoppers, needle stoppers I showed you earlier. And then I saw this sock set on their Instagram. I've got somebody knocking at the door again. This is Ginger Snap. This is a, what did they call it? A bite size sock set. So we've got a 50 gram skein and a 20 gram mini. So 336 yards. This is the dust fingering set in 7525. And this is going to make the most fun pair of socks. And the name got me. It's called Fundy Undies. And Fundy is spelt like our Bay of Funday, which our Bay of Fundy, which is where I close to where I live in New Brunswick. So the Bay of Fundy has some of the largest tides in the world. It's a giant funnel of water that comes in and comes out tidally. So we end up with mud flats on certain times of the day. We end up with huge waves and you, you know, no access to the seafloor, but there are times of the day where you can walk the seafloor. So I saw the name of this. It has nothing to do with Bay of Fundy, but I saw Fundy undies and I thought, well, that's awfully cute. I need to have one of those. And it'll be a perfect sock set with very little leftovers. Win, win. So that is one. And then um, Kim announced a new uh, collection of yarns called, was it Grandma's Garden? Grandma's Flower Garden? And I ordered um, some skeins from that. The first one is Bee Balm. So this is uh, what's called classic fingering. It is 75.25 but a high micron count, it's beautiful and soft. So, oh, I didn't mean to take that all the way off. Look how fun this is. I thought this would be a really fun pair of socks. Can't wait to see how it knits up. So I'm not sure, I didn't check Kim's shop to see if she still has any in store, but I will have her shop linked below so you can go have a look. So I got Bee Balm. And then I couldn't resist, seeing as I seem to be in my pinky, pinky time of life. This is called Speckled Phalaenopsis. Same fingering weight base. I got two skeins because I'm picturing a soft pink mohair for, I don't know what, a ranunculus, a Wilfreda. Do I need a second pink Wilfreda? But two skeins of this at the 463 yards will give me enough yardage to hold with mohair to do something. It's so, so pretty. So that was my order from Ginger Snap. And then I had mentioned last time that again, um, local friends, Sophie um, from Cozy Meadow Knits and um, a local friend, Rochelle, was doing, we were going to decide to do an order from Knit Picks um, to get above the free, the free shipping threshold, um, which is $75 
US or Canadian, I can't remember, uh, we get dinged because of the exchange rate. The Canadian dollar is still not so fantastic. Um, and yeah, we never know if we're going to get hit. I don't think we got hit with duties, but um, the exchange rate was, it was pretty punishing on the credit card, but it was still quite inexpensive overall. So that upcycle alpaca sport that I showed you last time, or that I showed you for my ginger snap, I ordered another sweater quantity of it. I ordered four skeins of this, it's called Space. That's the color there. It's a really soft kind of plummy, burgundy, almost got some brown notes in it, but it's quite heathered this yarn. So, and then I had picked up, this one is called Cornflower. It's a nice gray blue and I thought together they would be a really nice color work yoke sweater that I can knit either at a sport or a DK gauge. So I have four skeins of this one and one skein of this one. So I've, I had, I've been working with this yarn, I'm enjoying working with this yarn, which is why I ordered another sweater quantity. And as I said, they were on sale for $5 a ball, which for 273 yards for 100 grams, even US with the exchange rate, was still a great deal for a sweater quantity. And then I was cruising, excuse me, pardon me. Then I was cruising through their sale section, because why not? And um, I ran into this alpaca upcycle Surrey alpaca. So it's the same upcycle brand, which I believe is a limited release, limited edition. And this is an Aran weight. And it's so soft. So this I could knit in quite a few. I would knit it probably more to DK weight gauge than an Aran weight, DK worsted. It is 109 yards for 50 grams. I think they only had this color in the beige left. And if you know, I'm not a beige fan. And again, I'm in my burgundy pink, my burgundy pink phase apparently. Um, this is 100% Surrey alpaca. That would be better, wouldn't it? And the colorway is Contuta. Contuta. So I got 10 skeins of this, which was probably an overestimation, but again, it was on sale for a really inexpensive price. And yeah, this will be something next fall, winter, because it's not going on my needles now. Summer, summer knits abound. Once, uh, once the work knitting is done, I'm going to be treating myself to a whole bunch of cast-ons, summer garment t-shirt cast-ons, and some fun socks. And I do have to actually cast on some more Christmas gift socks. Man socks need to hop on my needles soon, but I'm running a little low on commercial sock yarn. Do I, do I buy any commercial sock yarn? Manly commercial sock yarn? No, I just keep buying fun, pretty things for me. <laughs> okay, friends, where are we at? So that was acquisitions. Um, and then we're just going to do a little chit chat and upcoming plans for the last segment. So wine, I'm still wind up. So you have heard me mention Fiddlehead Fiber Festival numerous times at this point. It is the second year for the Fiddlehead Fiber Festival it is being held in Florenceville, Bristol in New Brunswick, April 12th to the 13th. We made a snap decision at knit night a couple of weeks ago to stay for both nights, two nights. We were only, we were only going to stay for one night. And Sophie said to me, why are we only staying one night? And I said, well, I thought that was all anybody was going to stay. Um, and we had a quick whip around chat with people who were going and Instagram chats with people who weren't actually at knit night and asked if they wanted to go the two nights. So now we're going to stay for the Friday night and the Saturday night and I can't wait. 
as I did, I loved the gathering we had in Sussex. I didn't get enough time to sit and knit and chat with my knitting friends. So I'm really looking forward to having that opportunity at Fiddlehead. I will be at the Yarn Indulgences booth um, Friday evening and all day Saturday, except for the hour and a half I'm doing my class. My class, uh, my Sock Heel Clinic class is on Saturday the 13th. Let me know if you're coming. Let me know if you'd like more information about it. I'm happy to share. I will have the Fiddlehead Fibre Festival website linked below and you can also follow them on Instagram or Facebook. So that's coming up in two and a half, three weeks fast. It's coming up fast. And uh, part of me is excited because I can't wait to go and hang out with my knitting friends. The other half of me is like, oh my God, I'm not ready. <laughs> I've got stuff that needs to be finished. <laughs> um, upcoming plans. I'd said Archie leaves our house on Tuesday. I think Brad's going to drive up on Tuesday to Fredericton. Um, and then he'll pick Samantha. She's got a, a late, she doesn't get in until like, I think one o'clock in the morning into Fredericton. So he'll get Archie settled and hang out with him at her house and then, uh, run out to the airport to pick her up, spend the night and then come home on Wednesday. So, and then we have to clean. Then we got to clean. Oh boy. I didn't think he shed a lot because he's usually only here for a couple of days. There are piles of Archie fluff everywhere. And then he didn't get groomed. He didn't have a haircut before he came. So he's big and flappy and hairy. I'll, I'll put, I'll have put in some pictures or some videos because he may be a pain in the butt, but he's so cute. It's a good thing. He's cute. Um, so the, the, the twigs, the dirt, the, the dust, the mud, everything is coming in with him from outside. Um, now that the snow has melted and boy, oh boy, I'm not used to that kind of mess. It's been a long, a lot of years since we've had a dog. So the other thing I asked you last time, I showed you these beauties, this May flowers from Sweet Skein of Mine and said Elton or Wilfreda. So most of you voted for Elton. Um, I had other suggestions, including Milton from Hohe. Um, I'll put a picture. It's a long line Cardi, but has a more fitted shoulder and body. So that might be an option as well. My plan is when I have time. So at this point, we're talking after Fiddlehead hopefully before I see you next time, I'm going to swatch. I'm going to wind this up. I'm going to swatch in stripes like Elton and Milton. And I'm also going to swatch with it held double to see what I think. I want the yarn to tell me what it wants to be. This was a limited edition color from Sweet Skein of Mine called May Flowers. I bought it back in 2020 when I was trying to support my local indie dyers during COVID because the world was nuts. Hard to believe we're coming. That's four years ago. Today's the 31st. Yeah, four years ago today, we were shut down. Uh, we shut down our business on May 19th to the public and then proceeded to work our guts out on our own. Brad and I worked for nine weeks on our own, keeping the business running. Um, and all of that uncertainty, boy, it does not seem like forever ago, but just like yesterday. So anyway, digression. This I will swatch and I will show you next time Next time, I'll, I'll hopefully have a couple swatches to show you what that's looked like. And coming up, um, it's my birthday month. My birthday is later in April. So um, Fiddlehead, I may be shopping because it's my birthday month. Um, I'd like to think I won't be, but I love to support these small makers. And um, and my I said my birthday's the end of the month. Brad and I are hoping to get to Halifax for a couple of days. We like to get a hotel down on the waterfront and uh, walk the waterfront and hit some of our, hit some really nice bars and restaurants downtown there in Halifax. Um, we used to live in Halifax when Brad was based there in the Navy. So it's fun to go back as tourists. Uh, I have a vlog. I did a, my first ever vlog um, was our trip to Halifax back in the spring, uh, fall of 2022. And we had glorious weather. So, um, I, I'm thinking I will do a vlog for my birthday a couple of days. I'd like to go to Fia Fia Yarns, The Loop in Halifax, as well as L and K. There are three locally uh, local yarn shops in the Halifax region. There's none in Dartmouth anymore. I'd like to take you on visits to all three of those shops. So that is my plan. I was thinking I was going to do it my last time in Halifax earlier this week, but timing just didn't work out. The weather was awful. It was cloudy and drizzly and icy and sleety. And I just didn't feel like having to park anywhere and walk 
and get wet and then get back into the car and move on. So I'm hoping for more favorable weather in April, at the end of April. So hopefully I will have a vlog from Halifax, birthday, not weekend, because my birthday is a Wednesday this year. So we're thinking of going Monday night, Tuesday night, heading home Wednesday. I have to see what the shop looks like if I can get away for those days or not. I haven't booked anything yet because I'm not sure I can get away because lovely Amanda who works with me is covering for Fiddlehead Fiber Festival for me being away. She's also covering for me for Knit City Toronto for being away. I'm going to be gone for almost a week, I think. It looks like a week. I think we're going in Thursday and leaving the following Thursday. I'm planning to go see a couple of shows in Toronto, Les Miserables, makes me cry. I've seen it numerous times. Doesn't matter. I want to see it again. So I'm going to go see that. And I'm thinking Hades Town while we're before I head to family in Kitchener. So if you're coming to Knit City Toronto, let me know in the comments. And I will tell you now that you will find me at the Yarn Indulgences booth all weekend unless I'm wandering shopping. Um, so if you're coming to Knit City Toronto and want to say hello, that would be lovely. And I would, I can't wait to meet some new faces and see some familiar faces as well. Um, I will be at the Yarn Indulgences booth at Knit City Toronto on May 18th and 19th. May 18th and 19th. We're setting up on the 17th. We're flying in on the 16th if you need my itinerary. <laughs> All right, my friends, um, I didn't really talk about dream knitting. I'll wait for that next time. It is going to be another linen-y, cotton -y t t-shirt of some sort and some more socks, of course. I will see you in three weeks. So the 31st, so we're looking at probably the April 20th. 21st, the week probably before I go away for my birthday and after Fiddlehead. Some point in between those two occasions, I will come back to see you and say hello. And my plan is also to have some vlog footage from the Fiddlehead Fiber Festival. I always say this and then I really suck at it because I just get in the moment and hanging out with people. So my plan is to have some vlog footage, either to have a standalone episode, a little mini-sode, or to attach to the next podcast. So it feels like I've rattled through that. I don't feel like I had as much knitting as I normally have, but I'm going to say thank you. I'm just looking down at my notes, double check. I have really haven't missed anything. I will have had some footage of walks in the woods, snowy walks um, with my little black and white friend, Archie, or um, at the beginning or at the end, and um, maybe some other things. I don't, can't remember what's on my camera reel, but I thank you so much for being here. I may as well finish that off before I say goodbye. Oh, delicious. Happy knitting, my friends. Happy sipping. And I will see you soon for the prize winners for the cow in about a week and then podcast in about three weeks. Cheers, my friends. What? No, back up. Back up. Good boy. Are you a good boy? I know. Did I not let you come in? Did I not let you come in? How mean, especially with your lovely face. What? No, no, back up. <laughs> Good boy. Good boy. Should we go get you a treat? Should we go get you a treat? I think so. Say bye-bye, friends. You want a treat? Paw? No, back up. Paw, back, paw. Good boy. Good boy. Archie down. Down. Good boy.